I suggest a break after EPH. Yeah. It is Sunday, August 20th, 21st, yeah, and it's 10.09 a.m., and the business meeting will be in order. We are going to start with 3SV and the committee report to amend. Um, Mr. Ooh. Mr. Rosen, do you want to give the committee report? Or yeah. talk about it, yeah. talk. talk about it, however right. you see fit. I can speak in favor of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, um, Hyman Rosen, um, uh, thank you to my fellow uh, ad hoc committee. Uh, thank you to my fellow ad hoc committee members who. Uh, help finalize the wording on this yesterday. Uh, the, uh, the basic uh, premise of the change to 3SV is that we no longer remove rejected entries from the list of finalists. We simply add uh, everything from the fifth non-rejected finalist and above makes the final ballot. So if there are entries that are rejected above the fifth non-rejected one, they go on the final ballot. Um, Speaking in favor of it, um, people say that it's an honor just to be nominated for a Yugo, and that's not just because they go to the loser's party. Um, being nominated can mean that a significant minority of fans have found some work to be of value and put it on the list. 3SV, as currently constituted, uh, allows uh, a majoritarian vote to remove such works from the list. Uh, if a majority of fans decide that you know, something is unworthy, uh, for whatever reason, they can just ban it. And we know in the past there have been you know, various movements and trends in science fiction that initially met with great hostility. You know, so cyberpunk might have been removed, new wave. You know, and you know, who knows, maybe next year, you know, Pokepunk you know, can, <laughs> you know, can have a significant minority and everyone else will decide, what, this is garbage, make it go away. So I think 3SV as it stands is just not a good way for the fan community to deal with you know, the possibility of having works uh, that just a few fans like be nominated, appear on the ballot, get some recognition, get the honor that way. On the other hand, we also know that it's possible um, for a significant minority to fill up the slate, uh, sorry, fill up the list of nominees with things that no one will vote for and no one likes. Uh, or except for you know, perhaps that small minority. This amendment uh, gives you the best of both worlds. It allows minority groups, no matter what their intent, to get their, um, to get their favorites onto the ballot if they have enough votes. It allows everyone else, if they find that what's on the ballot isn't good enough, to just add more slots to the ballot. You know, just say, okay, we don't like this, this, and this, but you know, that will simply cause more works to rise onto the ballot, and then they'll be available for everyone to vote for. Um, and I think, that's, uh, I think that's a good thing, and I think that's the way we should go. So, thank you. Mr. Goldstein, are you speaking? Um, I'd like to actually yield for a question. Mr. Rosen, will you yield for a question? Yes. Mr. Goldstein, could you come to the microphone? Yeah, Ari Goldstein. Um, just so I can clarify, uh, so if, for instance, you have 15, a, fi a long list of 15, and the first 10 are rejected, does that mean we'll then have a Hugo ballot, final ballot of 15 entries? Yes. Okay. Dr. Adams, for what purpose? Speech again. Andrew Adams. Uh, it is indeed an honour just to be nominated, or to be a finalist as we now change the uh, nomenclature, except if one then finishes on the final vote below no award. And we already list the top 15 and 
potentially some others if they get more than 5% of the nominations in the data that comes out afterwards. So we will know what came out and what was there. But I feel that something being removed at the second stage would be preferable than going on to the final ballot and being ranked below no award. It is less embarrassing, particularly for those people who may have been put on a slate without their knowledge, without really understanding what's going on. And as this year's speaker to finalists or voice of the Hugos, as my official job title is, I can tell you that quite a few of the people who were on the ballot and finished below no award did not know what the situation was, did not know, despite our efforts to inform them politely and kindly about the current controversy, they did not understand what they, know, what they were getting into, and I feel deeply sorry for them that they were put in this position of thinking that they were validly nominated for a major prestigious award and then to be insulted by finishing below no award uh, on the results. I think it would be less problematic for them to be eliminated at the second stage. Thank you. Mr. Stanley, for what purpose does the member rise? Mr. Chairman, I believe the question is clear. I move to end the debate and call the question. Is there any on the immediately pending amendment only? Is there any objection to calling the question on the amendment? Seeing none, we will vote on the amendment. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The no's appear to have it. They do have it. The motion fails. We are now on the underlying motion for 3SV. Mr. Harris, would you like to speak? Mr. Blog, for what purpose would like you? To make an amendment to the, uh, I'd like to make an amendment to the, uh, right on the Senate amendment to the, uh, to the amendment. What? <laughs> To 3SV. To 3A. Is there a second for the motion to amend? That's true. Yeah. I did recognize Mr. Harris. So, Mr. Harris, give your opening remarks and then we'll like Thank you. Um, I appreciate the vast majority of people were here yesterday, so I don't intend to repeat everything I said then. However, I think it is useful to remind people of the key points behind this motion overall. We said that we felt it's important to think about what are the success criteria for the successful Hugos in response to you know, the challenge we've had the last couple of years. How do we preserve the reputation and integrity of the wards? Uh, we noted, and you'll see in the EPH data, that EPH does indeed provide increased diversity. The question is, is it successful to have one or two non-slate candidates in a category that is you know, heavily under attack. I think there is also the question of what I would call the oxygen of publicity, to quote a phrase. Um, you know, if people can call themselves finalists year after year, even if they're not a winning, you know, it's quite a good incentive to carry on, basically, and keep stacking up those finalist uh, uh, recognitions. You know, in saying that the only way to win is not to play, we are simply saying we are really not interested in engaging with those behaviours and we are going to reject people who try and manipulate the awards in that way. We also noted that the reason we've constructed 3SV in the way we have is that we feel it is only a committee of the whole that can identify you know, egregious candidates as opposed to merely unpopular candidates. It does assume some intelligence and thought on behalf of the voters. It does assume that they're going to accept things that they may not like, as long as they recognize they're appropriate, they re represent minority interests. Personally, I am willing to trust the voters. Yes, appropriate rubric needs to be in the ballot form, but frankly, if we don't trust the whole of WUSFUS, um, we might as well not have the business meeting. Um, I also believe that Fundamentally, any statistical solution at EPH has one limitation. <coughs> Someone who's really smart can probably find a way to game it. The simplest gaming we've got this year is sort of human shield candidates. Well, the best way to distinguish what's a legitimate candidate that's been inserted in a slate from a, a suspect candidate is that we all sort of can make our own minds up. Again, I would look to the committee of the whole. And in, in a broader sense, I think 3SV is a very flexible solution, because whatever tactics are applied to the construction of slates, the voters can judge what they think is appropriate. So it makes us all responsible. 
Lastly, we did also notice that you know we chose the up down over a, an, and the particular construction over something like a ranking semi final because we felt it wasn't realistic to expect people to absorb and positively rank maybe 15 items. This is meant to be a short, sharp filter to enable um, people to say, effectively, we want to know award certain items at this stage. Thank you. Mr. Blog. Gary Blog, I'd like I move that we add both a sunrise and sunset uh, provisions on this amendment, sunrise in 2018, 20, and sunset in 2021. Already has a sunset. Hmm? There is a sunset clause. For every year between now and 2022, so your 2021 sunset is already in. <laughs> the, the deputy noted that there is already a sunset clause for every year between 20... Between now and 2022, so the 2021 is already in. Ms. Paddle, for what purpose does it... Could you... <coughs> Parliamentary inquiry. If passed this year, it would have to be ratified next year and would not go into effect till 2018? Or that am is, I... That is true. Then as we do not need a sunrise clause because, as stated, it already does that. Yes. Mr. Kowalczyk. I have not yet heard one. Is there a second for the motion? I believe the motion was withdrawn. Oh, well, okay. Is there a speech against 3SV? Mr. Yellow. In general, I am in favor of things that decrease the power of slates. Unfortunately, while 3SV is, I believe, well-intentioned, what 3SV forces the voters to do is to take a look at 15 works and make the political decision that these works are on the ballot for reasons that they find politically unacceptable. I believe that we should be looking at the merits of the works and not as some of the people who construct slates and claim that they are doing it for political reasons. I don't want to play Vox Day's game. I want to judge the works on their merits and not to make political statements. And there isn't time as 3SV is constructed for people to make other than political judgments on the merits of the work. Ms. Faber, a speech in favor? Kat Faber, um, I would just like to say that I think it's pretty clear when you look at these works, which works were nominated for harassment or grieving purposes. So. I don't understand why it's going to take a long time to make those judgments. Thank you. Sorry, Mr. Kowalczyk. Use the mic. He doesn't, he's asking for. Yeah, yeah. Even this might be controversial. There's the long list. Yeah. Which yeah, so Mr. Kowalczyk is going to pass out some copies of the long list awards, or long list from last night's awards. So that was the, that was the point of personal privilege. Is there a speech against the, yes, you. I don't want to call people you, but. <laughs> I don't know your name. We're all about to know your name. Yeah, 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 we are. Yeah, Stephanie. Yeah. Hi, I'm Stephanie Sullivan. I am against 3SV because in, from everything that I can see, it's adding more negativity to our community. We are always all responsible. Our uh, esteemed writer of this has has explained that he wants to put the the community 
at the heart of this. And I believe with this, we're actually taking a section of our community out of it when there are better ways to actually stop the puppy slates. Anything can be gamed when there is a consensus vote if the sample size is small enough. The best way, honestly, for us to actually stop the gaming of this system is to be positive, to be putting more positivity into our community and actually rallying around the Hugo Awards to get more people involved. Because the more people who are actually involved, the less likely it is and the less influence that these smaller groups actually have. So that is the reason why I am against 3SV. Thank you. Mr. Actually, you haven't spoken, so. You. you. Yes, you. you. <laughs> In the gray shirt. The one with you, the hair and the beard. You with the, with the, the face. <laughs> oh, that's so descriptive. <laughs> David Dyer Bennett. Um, I like. Uh, yeah, eat it a little know. more. I like Ben's hope for less obvious politics and trust in people, except that already last night in just the second really serious year of this, I remember two specific statements and I may be forgetting one where winners felt it was necessary to comment very specifically on this politics while accepting their Hugos. And that doesn't seem to me to be an actual effective way to keep that political sort of thing um, less of a big deal, less visible. Speech. Mr. Chairman, was that a speech against the adoption? I believe it was in favor. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to rule that that was in favor. Let's have an against. <laughs> I'm looking for a speech against Mr. Goldstein. Ari Goldstein. Um, sort of uh, working off what Mr. Yallo was saying, given the fact that uh, the more time you create, the, the more time pressure you create for the voters, the less, of a, uh, the less of a subsection of those voters are actually going to have the leisure time and the basically bandwidth, to use a term, to actually make informed decisions. So by adding this extra step, you're actually uh, also going off of the sample size issue. You're actually shrinking the, the sample size that are going to be making the decisions to the people who actually have the time and uh, inclination to make ba effectively two sets of votes. So in my opinion, and I think the, the data, uh, if you're trying to prevent slates, this will actually make some of the slates more powerful because people who don't care what they're actually reading, they're actually making it for, politically, for purely political reasons. They're, gonna, they're going to vote in everything. Uh, a good example in the American politics is the NRA. They're a very small group, but they're all very motivated, and, they, and they're one-issue voters, so they have a lot more influence. In this way, by adding this extra step, you're going to increase the power of, the, uh, of blocks who are willing to vote for, for not because of the merits, but because of political reasons. And that's why I think while 3SV is, is well-intentioned, I do believe it's, it's actually counterproductive to what we want to do here. Mr. McCarty, I saw you. Hi, my name is Dave McCarty. Um, I believe that we are already engaged in what 3SV is doing. We're just now vo forced to do it at voting time. Um, the only, the one idea that everybody has in their heads that I think is incorrect is that our nomination process is a democratic vote. We never build to a majority on anything. Democracy is about majority rule. We're taking small pluralities and picking the best, which is how a small group is able to game the system. The two ways to fix that, since it's a poll of taste rather than a democratic process, is either to uh, have the administration team wait the answers as any pollster would do, uh, which I believe the room would not support, or adopt a democratic process. This is very clearly, in all the cases, voting, building to a democratic majority in all the cases, which is how you overcome a perverse minority using democracy. So I'm very much in support of this amendment, or of this change, thank you. Speech against 
the man on the end, you haven't. I, I have a point of information. Come on. Name? Uh, Daniel. Uh, name is Daniel Rigo, R E G O. Um, I was just wondering uh, how much time would be allocated for this rejection phase and if the works being considered would be available in a packet uh, during this phase or not. Ms. Fazard, would you like to answer? Colette Fazard, as one of the makers of the motion, um, we are projecting probably about a, um, I think about a two month uh, period for the uh, review of the 15 list, the packet would not be prepared at that time. The purpose of the second phase is to essentially move forward the no award uh, possibility to the second stage uh, rather than in the uh, voting stage. Is there a speech against? You, speech against? Uh, Hold on, look at the. The woman in the far right in the white shirt. Uh, uh, I'm just I'm curious about the def definition of eligible voters uh, when it talks about 20% of eligible voters, whether that is voters or is that nominators? I believe, and this, the makers can correct me, it's the voters, so it would be this current year's membership. Yeah. yeah. Yes, it would be this current year's membership, and it would not be the number of ballots returned. It is everybody who is eligible. So it would be the total count of attending, supporting, and YA members at the time of the, the close of the ballot. So it is setting quite a high threshold as to how many people have to reject to work, and that is deliberate. Point of information? Yes. Uh, Colin? Gary Blog, in the um, current um, nomination process, and or as it will as it will be ratified next year, it will be the people who can nominate are the ones who are from this year's Worldcon and last year's Worldcon. Using an example, is phase yeah. two is that the same or is it just Kansas? We were using this year I as an example. Just this year. That's what I want to clarify. Is there a speech against the motion, the woman over here? I didn't hear the answer to the question. The answer is that. The second stage would be voters, which is, by definition, the members of the current Worldcon. Hi, my name is Jillian Nichols. Um, I have a number of objections to this, but some of them have already been stated. So the main thing is this can be gamed. We will be giving an extra opportunity to a hostile minority to downvote things that otherwise would be approved. While they may not be large enough to completely knock something off, this will also incite factionalism among regular fans. And as has been seen in the last two years, it's much easier to win if you're competing against a group of works that have been nominated by the rabid puppies. If author A's fans decide that author B has already won enough and decide to downvote his stuff, to make sure that their choice has a less competitive set of works to go up against, we're likely to wind up with a lot of things being knocked off because of fan factionalism, which will further incite negative feelings throughout fandom. Excuse me, can I get your name? Mr. Bacon, speech in favor. If I could get your paper, I don't know what you meant. My name is James Bacon. I'm a train driver. I understand 3SV. I don't need to read it more than two times. I can comprehend it. Understanding the transparency is a fundamental for me in any fair system, and I feel it is a fair and democratic system. I've been a Hugo nominee and a winner. It's a huge honor. But last year was an incredible, horrendous stress and pressure. And I won a Hugo. I won one. And after winning one, I just cried. Because the amount of pressure and stress that is currently on fellow members of our community is totally unfair. I say to you all here, I urge you to consider putting this forward. But I say to you, I won an Alfie 10 hours ago. 
10 hours ago I won an Alfie. How wonderful, such a beautiful thing. But I've been a frequent loser. And I would much prefer to be a loser again at any stage than to see this stress and pressure on our fellow community members continue. So I just speak in its favour. Is there a speech? Mr. Rett, speech against? Please, please come to the microphone. There is one minute left for speeches for. I think it's a point of information. Joe Red, I think it's a point of information. No, Can you just need to talk into the microphone. Raise the microphone, please. No. There's a number of people speaking that have no understanding of the No, sit down. Shh. Debate. You Debate. Sit down. Privilege. You're out of order. No. Sit down. You're, you are out sir, of order. Sir, you are out of order. Please sit down. Do you ask for information? No, that's not a question. No, you're, you're not, not asking a question. Mic. Uh, He's not asking a question. Sir, please sit down. A point of information is only for the purpose of asking a question. If you wish to present something you think is data, that is purely debate. If you want to present something about your opinion of what other people have said, that is purely debate and of questionably in order. And I asked for information. I asked the question. Is there a speech against the matter? We don't care about your rules except for when Yes. Uh, I'm Mike Stern. I'm still Mike Stern. Um, I'm a procrastinator, okay? And I suspect that I am not alone in being a procrastinator. One of the problems that I have with this is this is another round of voting on which I can procrastinate. Uh, and wait till the last minute and then make up my mind. No, it's, it's not something that I can go in and make up my mind. I, there's nothing to read. Uh, I bl really do, do believe what Mr. Yellow said. Uh, you got to do it on the merits of the work. And if I don't have time to read the work, um, I'm not going to vote at all. Mr. Kowalczyk, for what? Can I get his name? Mike Stern. Mike Stern, thank you. I'm terrible. You have one minute. Rick Kowalczyk, um, I really agree with what Colin Harris said. Uh, this is the best solution we have. And having actually read it, I believe, and having a computer science degree and understanding a little about statistics, I believe it is actually very hard to game the system. You need 60% of those voting to game the system. And I do not believe that any author is going to get 60% of those people voting in this phase to knock out other people. And as Mr. Bacon said, better to be knocked out at that level than deal with the uh, angst and, and whatever of this going on and on and on. The current system is broken. Uh, the other thing is um, I feel that rabbit pu puppies are kind of like porn. When I, I know porn when I see it. I know rabbit puppies when I see it. There's no need to read the works to tell that something is there for the wrong reason. Is there a speech against? In favor is out of time. Miss, the woman in the UK shirt. Uh, my name is Carol Doms, D-O-M-S, and I'm coming against, there are several good reasons, that are good, and I agree with all of them. We're looking at something that happened right now, but I think we need to look to the future of our Hugos, and yes, you've probably discussed that, but it sounds like collusion there. The secret masters of fandoms are deciding things for the Hugos. I don't think this is a good thing for the Hugos. This thing will eventually pass. There's been things, and, and I know people who've been around for a while have seen various factions come up and die down. I think that's just going to add to the fuel to the fire that they're purposely doing that. I agree with the other gentlemen that the people who made comments, the ones that won, that was their right. I didn't agree with that because I just thought it added fuel to the fire. But think again for the future. When people are looking at Hugo's, how are they presented? Or is it going to be a legitimate ward done 
appropriately for our future. Thank you. Mr. Stanley, yes. Kevin Stanley, how much debate time remains against the motion? There's roughly one minute, I believe. Yes, Mr. one Mr. minute. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to move to uh, ex uh, extend the debate time to uh, total it up to a total of four minutes remaining, two minutes each side. Second. Is there any objection? Yeah, All right, we're going to vote on this. Extend debate requires a two-thirds vote in favor. All those in favor of extending debate by four minutes, two minutes per side. All right, hands. Yes, two minutes. Set it to four minutes. Oh, so resetting to four minutes, two minutes per side. All those in favor. All right, hands down. All those opposed? No, that's not two thirds. No, not two thirds. Yeah, I'm going to say the no's have it. The no's do have it. Debate time is. Mr. Wilmoth, for what purpose does the member rise? You have a, about a minute. Mike Wilmoth. Um, I have concerns about the um, option we're being given right now uh, until I can look at the data regarding how it compares against the other options, I would vote against, and I encourage everybody to do so. Mr. Walling, for what? The motion to call the question is not in order with less than one minute of debate time remaining. Mr. Quinn, for what purpose does the member? Uh, Jameson Quinn, I move that we add language. I'm sorry, I don't have language, uh, you know, ready. But that we add language to state that is the sense of the the meeting that no work should be voted down in the second round. It is not appropriate to vote a work down in the second round for aesthetic reasons. That this is only a, a means of uh, eliminating illegitimate, completely illegitimate works. And no work should be voted down for, for aesthetic reasons. I don't think so. Is there a second for the motion to add it's just, a, it's just a sense of, it's not. It would need to be a resolution of the business meeting. Yeah. yeah. So I they would, would up modify 3.8.3 and 4. Yeah. We can fix yeah. up wording. We can, so we would, if well, the. It could just be a resolution of the meeting. I, I'm not sure if it would be in the text. Handle it. The text does it make could sense to handle it as a separate resolution or to tag it onto this? You could say. I think it has to go with this because it doesn't make any sense if it fails. All right, so the motion has been offered and seconded to add text, which, if the meeting will allow it, the head table will work to create language along the lines of the maker's motion. Um, I have a parliamentary inquiry on the motion. Mr. Yeah. Stanley. Kevin Stanley. Uh, I, I'm unclear on whether the maker intends for this to be language written into the Constitution or to be added as a, to the commentary in some way as a sense of the meeting involved with it. Could the said, sense of the meeting. It is unclear that this, the way he's yes, put it, I, what, does he intend for this to create wording that would be written into the Constitution? That's all I would like to know. Uh, I, I honestly, I, I think the sense of the meeting would be fine. I'm just not sure of the parliamentary if I'm allowed to even make that, if that motion. In that case, Mr. Chairman, I raise a point of order that the motion is not in order because we are considering a motion and he is attempting to introduce a resolution. Okay, on, so the, then the in point. that case, I will make the motion to add to the text of the. Of the if you want that? That's fine. You would. No yeah, yeah, it is. And I, mean, I believe, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, go ahead. That's yeah. why so the motion has been moved and seconded. There's no time left for debate, so we're just going to vote on. The, the time expired while the maker was making his mo amendment. 
Mr. Rett may have something to say. Mr. Rett, for what purpose does the member rise? Please come to the microphone. This is a question Name. for the parliamentary. Name. Joe Rett, I believe that there is a bit of ignorance here that I would like qualified. It, my understanding is that the section 38 um, of the Constitution is on the Hugo ballot. And he is asking to have the ballot changed, which would be a change to the Constitution, would it not? He, the maker did agree that he would like language written into the Constitution. That is the motion we are, that is currently before the assembly, is to amend the 3 SV motion to include text which would be written into the Constitution and thus appear on the Hugo ballot that it is the sense that vote work should not be voted down for purely aesthetic reasons. It would be an addition to 382. Yes, the, the entire section 3 appears with, is sent out with the ballot. It doesn't actually appear on it, but it is sent out with the ballot. So, seeing as how to... Mark Olson, if we're going to vote on an amendment to the Constitution, could I please ask that the actual language be stated? Pig in the poke really is not the thing to do. Uh, so. It's something like members should not vote no for aesthetic reasons. M Mr. Quinn, do you wish to try and put some language together in, I, I would currently go with members shall not vote yeah. for purely aesthetic reasons in the second round of voting, but. Yes, I, I, I agree with that language. The only question, sorry, the only question that I have is uh, where exactly that would go. I'm in 3 if you. It would, it would be in section 3.8.2. I agree, that is, that is so moved. Right. All right. All those in favor of the amendment, please. Yes, I will repeat it for the, the meeting. To amend 3.8.2 to read, no member shall vote in the, to, to add, no member shall vote. No award should be voted down on the aesthetic No semi-finalist, I believe is the term we're using qualifier. should qualifier should be voted down for purely aesthetic reasons should should no qualifier should be voted down for purely aesthetic reasons would be an addition to 3.8.2 The answer is, the question is, how would the vote counters know? The answer is, they don't. <laughs> that isn't, that's kind of a... Um, that's debate on the motion. All, okay, we're gonna vote on this now. All those in favor of the amendment, please raise your hands. Jameson's amendment will be underlined. No, Jameson's amendment. All right, hands down, all those opposed. The no's seem to have it, the no's do have it, the motion fails. We are now going to vote on the underlying Mr. Rett. For what purpose does the member rise? I want to remind the audience that I have to read it to Joe Rett, I have a question for why the body is being asked to vote on a motion for which we have data which has not been given to the body. That's debate on the motion. It's out of order. Time for debate has expired. That's debate on the process. No, it's no. not. Okay. All right, we're going to vote on the under. For what purpose does the member rise? Uh, um, still wanting to Darcy Conaty. Still wanting to clarify eligible voters question. because if it is voters, it's a moving target at the point that we're discussing. So I'm wondering if we need. I, I don't know it is how we. Anybody who we has a membership before the close of the second phase of voting. So if someone were to buy a membership at 1158, 
on the day the voting phase closes and we can get them a pin in that amount of time, they would be able to vote. Thank you. All right, we're now going for, I'd really like to just actually vote on this. <laughs> okay. There's no debate. Oh, you can Yeah, come to the microphone. Can I make a brief statement? Yeah. Uh, if some, it is possible under our rules for people to continue to propose amendments which are all undebatable because we've expired, debate time has expired. If somebody wishes to stop this process, they need to gain recognition and then move to call the question. I just want to add a, uh, a brief sentence to the end of the first. Hey, could you? Oh, Daniel Rigo. I want to add a brief sentence to the end of 3.8.5, the first paragraph to read, uh, any uh, rejected uh, qualifier that re had received more votes than any of the final nominees will be, denote, will, will be noted on the final ballot, but uh, that choice will not be allowed to be voted upon. So basically, if someone had more votes than the rejected, people on, on the ballot should be able to know that there were Is there a second others. for the motion? Seeing none, the motion is not taken. Mr. Kowalczyk, for what purpose does the member? Could wait for one second. I'll come. I can actually. Sorry. Um, so, isn't it true? Point of parliamentary inquiry. Isn't it true that if this is passed here, it needs to be passed again next year, and people will have a year to look at whatever data they can find? Yes. Thank you. Call the question. Uh, all right, we're gonna vote on it. I've only been trying for five minutes. <laughs> All those in favor of 3SV, as written, please raise your hands. All right, hands down. All those opposed? The, how many people would like a division? I'm going to say that's not 20%. I'm going to say the eyes have it. The eyes do have it. The motion passes and is sent on to Worldcon 75. I am now going to call for a... Yes. I'm going to call for a five-minute recess. 